Greet you all in the highly exalted, wonderful, precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to the whole Bible tour in three years. Turning our Bibles to Psalm 119 verses 105 to 128. And in these verses, especially the God servant is, uh, or the psalmist is going through a lot of sufferings and a lot of pains and a lot of testings because he follows the word of God. And uh, the first eight verses from Psalm 105 uh, are written on the uh, letter uh, Noon and um, verse 105. It says, the word is a lamp for my feet and a path and a light on my path. Now, uh, this is a very famous uh, verse in this Psalm. And it says that the word of God is not just to the eyes and it is not just to the brain but it is also to our walk or in other words it is a practical guide it is a practical light to the path that the psalmist is taking now this is very very crucial because this is the area where the word of god is most painful the word of god might not be as painful as um you know uh, uh walking according to it like uh, just thinking about it, meditating about it, or, or just trying to uh, figure out what the Lord is able to, uh, uh, trying to convey. Um, the most difficult part is to follow the word of God. And uh, the psalmist clearly gives himself to follow the word of God in verse 105. And he says, uh, it's a personal thing. Your word is a lamp for my feet so he recognized that uh, uh, every step that he takes he was seeing whether it was taken in the light of the meditated word in the light of the demands of the word and uh, this was very crucial uh, this is very crucial for christian life and in verse 106 it says i've taken an oath and confirmed it that i will follow your righteous uh, laws now um this is the ultimate relationship we can have with the word of God that is doing the word of God or following the word of God, living according to the word of God. Because of what use is it, uh, the Lord Jesus says, if you hear the word, understand the word, but don't walk according to it. It's like a foolish man building his house upon the sand. And uh, when it was tested, he says that the crash was very great. Uh, um, and uh, uh, verse 107, he says, I have suffered much preserve me according to your word. So there was a lot of temptation, uh, temptation for him to give up, to divert and to be distracted from keeping the word of God. Never, never keeping the word of God is easy. Now we need to understand very crucial uh, things about keeping the word of God. You don't keep the word of God just for yourself, but you keep the word of God in its context only when you are living a life for his glory. A life that is lived for God's glory primarily will only be able to obey God's word in its context. Secondly, we cannot keep God's word in its context with our own strength. It is always dependence upon God that will help us to keep the word of God in its context. And thirdly, when we keep the word of God in its context, then we are openly declaring war with Satan and the world system. And so suffering is going to become an inevitable part of their life. So the psalm is prepared for this. And he says, I've suffered much. This is what the Lord Jesus is calling. He's calling us and he says, if anybody wants to follow me, let him carry his cross. Or in other words, the Lord Jesus never promises, uh, uh, you know, comfort or never promises a bed of roses. He doesn't promise a very smooth life. But in fact, he's calling us to a life of suffering. And um, going forward, he says, uh, oh Lord, with all the sufferings, um, accept the praise of my mouth and teach me your law. So he's always trying to learn the laws of God. And then uh, verse 109, always constantly his life was going through, um, you know, hard times, but yet he was sticking on to the word of God. And there are so many people who have laid a snare around him, um, but yet he stuck to the word of God. And now he says that this word of God is his heritage. This word of God is his joy. And uh, he keeps them till the very end. And then he ends this octave. And the next octave from verse 113, it begins with uh, the letter uh, Samoth, 
or Samak and in verse 13 it says uh, I hate double minded people but I love your law when he says he hates double minded people that means he is not double minded and uh, double minded is having a mind on God and at the same time also having a mind on the world which is not possible when you are really committed to follow the Lord then it is exclusive it is totally in for the Lord you cannot be double-minded you cannot uh, uh, try to see something that is comfortable here and also that is convenient out there in the sight of the Lord when you want to please the Lord then you should be outrightly one-sided uh, to be ready to go against every odds and then uh, he goes forward and he says uh, I put my hope in your word you are my refuge you are my shield no uh, you are not following a dead religion or you are not following uh, some kind of uh, dead philosophy where you are following the word of God to keep the word of God but we need to recognize that the word of God is is a connection with a living God and so when you follow the word of God in its context then you have a living relationship with God you have a divine protection of God you have the divine providence of God and uh, um, God is a refuge God is a hope God is a shield but uh, it's it's not in a way that you think is convenient but it is in a way that is best for our eternal good and Psalm 115 it uh, says you know um, he, he says uh, I don't want fellowship with evil doers because I keep the commandments of the Lord or in other words he is contrasting and is saying that the evildoers have nothing to do with obedience they may have uh, the evildoers can read the word of God can meditate the word of God can think and know the word of God but an evildoer can never keep the word of God and this is the basic context uh, or the contrast that the the psalmist is trying to prove and uh, Psalm 116 he says you know I, I I stretch on I stick on to your word because your word will make me live so uh, it's uh, God is protecting him and God is keeping him uh, alive and uh, the next verse Psalm 117 he says God uh, delivers him and uh, um, verse uh, 118 all the others uh, their dreams are delusions but what I stand on is reality because the the connection that we have with the God of the Bible is the only real thing that is going to take us through every situation and finally uh, when we come to uh, the next octave that is uh, from verses uh, 121 to 128 that begins with uh, the letter Ayin and um, uh, in verse 121 he says I have done what is righteous and just do not leave me to my oppressors so there are enemies and he says Lord please don't give me to my enemies because um, why is he not uh, willing to go to his enemies or uh, willing uh, that the Lord should leave him to be to his enemies it was not just a self-centered uh, plea but it was about God's glory and that's why he says uh, in uh, 119 and verse 122 onwards he says ensure your servants well-being because uh, you know I look for your righteous promise uh, for your salvation and then uh, he says teach me your decrees and uh, in verse 126 that everything around is going in a, a wrong way 127 he says Lord your word is so precious to me than pure gold and uh, I hate every wrong path so this was this was his uh, intention that the Lord should work on his behalf it was not just a self-centered thing but it was because God would honor his word God would get all the glory God's kingdom would be built and uh, that uh, this man could delight in the Lord more and more so uh, we should delight in the Lord more than what what we get out of the Lord this is very crucial only then our following the word will really happen when we are commercial when we only think about what good we can get then obviously our path will be uh, uh, struck down with some kind of distraction wherein we don't really follow the Lord uh, for what the Lord wants us to follow so in all these octaves uh, the psalmist one way he's telling he's, he has a lot of sufferings but he says it's worth all it because I just want to be near you and uh, secondly we've seen that uh, the connection he has with the word of God is not a dead connection but the connection he has with the word of God is the connection with the living God of the Bible where God delivers him 
situation, God comes to his rescue and God protects his the glory of his name through this man's life. And finally, he prays, uh, Lord, I know that I'm going through this hard times and that you might come to protect me. It is not for my sake, but it is so that I can keep your word. I can delight in you and I can follow you the remaining days of my life. Gracious Heavenly Father, help us to be people who follow you for who you are rather than for what we just get. Oh Lord, help us to be Christ centered more than, oh Lord, our own plans. Jesus, wonderful, precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you.